Hello and welcome to GitLab Admin Fundamentals, this time about managing users and groups. My name is Sander Brine, Customer Success Manager at GitLab. Let's start. Cool, managing users and groups. Uh, first of all, we'd like to say, okay, let's look at how we can create users. Um, there are a few options. Users can sign up manually via a sign up page or by an email invite, you can invite users through an email and uh, if they already have an account they can log in if not then they can uh, sign up admins can add users in the admin area manually or add users manually through an api call um, finally you can also automatically provision users through for example an ldap active directory or um, some more connection now what is this user provisioning uh, as I said, we have uh, we, we support many different uh, provisioning methods. Uh, this, it, the LDAP, as SAML, and Omni auth providers are mostly uh, just-in-time provisioning. Just-in-time provisioning means that when a user logs in, uh, it authenticates through LDAP, SAML, or uh, other Omni auth providers, and at that time it is added to GitLab and uh, the the the, the status of that user is then synced in inside of GitLab. If you want to sort of automatically and regularly check the status of existing users within your uh, user store, then you can use S SCIM, SKIM. Uh, that's sort of a scheduled way of provisioning users, but also rejecting users from your system, so blocking users uh, from your system automatically. Uh, so that's on scheduled dates, what you, when you, uh, how you set it, typically an hour, for example, um, other than the other ones that are just in time at login of the user. That means that, for example, a user that is dormant, that is sleeping, uh, and because it's left the company, might sit there for three or four months uh, eating a license, uh, but uh, obviously not logging in anymore, uh, and you want to um, block or inactivate that user. Um, you have LDAP sync in uh, in self-managed instances of GitLab uh, that updates user details. Um, for example, uh, email addresses or anything like that will be updated through this LDAP sync. Uh, there is also LDAP group sync and SAML group sync, and uh, this will not just sync the user details but also the group details, so which groups they are a member of. Uh, and with LDAP sync, it's also possible to block users, uh, so that if a user in LDAP is, for example, inactive, uh, because, as I said, it left, then um, with LDAP sync, these users are blocked in GitLab as well. Cool. About user provisioning, um, how to configure that, uh, that's all in the docs, uh, but this is basically how uh, we, we what we provide. Yeah. Looking at managing users as an admin in GitLab, uh, you have many different types of users. You have untrusted users, inactive users, blocked users, whatever. Um, what I'm going to explain to you now is, okay, what does this all mean and where can you find it? Moderating users. You're an administrator and you have to moderate your users. Uh, you typically go into the admin area uh, and in the search area you can see different types of users. Eh? Like I said, the, ad, the banned users, blocked users, etc. Uh, what does it mean? Now, um, users that are pending approval, they require an admin to approve uh, before they will become an actual user. Without this admin approval, they are not a user. They, are, they do not count against any license, but only, uh, but also do not have any access. Um, admin approval can be configured for new signups or for users over the user cap, uh, but also um, users that are automatically created through a user provisioning tool uh, and then blocked. So you, in user provisioning, you can configure that new users can be auto-created, but first are blocked and, and waiting for admin approval. Uh, all admins, that's not group owners, but real admins can um, set uh, uh, approve this. And uh, with the user cap, for example, uh, and also with the auto-provisioning uh, blocking users that are auto-created, uh, you can prevent your license to go over the license uh, limit you have so every license has a limit in number of users and with that you can prevent going over that license limit um, so that you are at least um, 
compliant in terms of uh, licenses and prevent true ops. Now, then you have blocked and unblocked users. Now, blocked users uh, is also with user provisioning, you can block users automatically. A blocked user is a user that is not visible. Uh, it's not occupying a seat, uh, cannot log in, uh, cannot access anything. Um, so uh, you, you can manually block a user and then uh, you are sure that they cannot do anything within GitLab. Uh, for non-public instances, you can also prevent user sign up so that uh, users cannot sign up themselves and, and retrieve a license. Uh, then you have ban users, banned users. You can ban a user from your instance temporarily or um, uh, completely. Uh, banned users are like blocked users, only that with banned users, you can't see any content that they created. So any content they created is also hidden. Then we also have uh, activation and deactivation of users. Um, for example, um, a user that is inactive in LDAP can be inactive and in inactivated in GitLab through this LDAP sync as well. Um, but we can also configure as an admin to automatically deactivate the dormant users that are dormant for more than 90 days. A dormant user is a user that is not logging in or uh, doing any activity in GitLab. Uh, so we have an automatic process that will check users. If they haven't been active in GitLab for more than 90 days, then we can deactivate the account and it will be reactivated once they log in again. Other than blocked users or banned users, they cannot log in, but also accounts will not be reactivated once they log in. Uh, an inactive account uh, also doesn't ac occupy a, a, a license seat um, and they can't access any repos, any APIs, etc. But upon login, they will be automatically activated. So they can log in again um, after being activated. Um, fairly new is trusting users. So a user that is created uh, is by default not trusted unless they... Um, um, uh, prove that they that they can be trusted through a uh, verification process. As an admin, you can set a user as being trusted, but uh, untrusted users um, have the problem that, for example, if they create a code snippet, then these snippets are considered as spam. And also, uh, untrusted users cannot create issues or nodes in GitLab. Yeah, so this sort of helps a little bit. Okay, if you look at this user administration page, all these different tabs uh, is helping, uh, is giving you this information. Um, apart from user creation and user moderation, you have to also actively manage members in, in GitLab. Uh, managing members uh, is not just a task of admins, but also group owners and project owners can manage memberships. Uh, managing memberships is typically done on or group, either group level or uh, project level, and uh, you can add memberships in several ways. So let me check what types of memberships we have. So we have direct members that are people or groups that have been added directly to the group or to the project. Uh, but you can also inherit memberships from parents groups. So uh, for, uh, for example, if a user is member, direct member of a parent, then an, a parent group, then any project underneath that group will inherit that membership. <clears throat> uh, you can also share uh, groups with projects, for example. So a group uh, in another part of the hierarchy, you can share that, that group with a project and then uh, people that are member of that group will become member of that project as well. Uh, you can have direct shared and inherited shared. So um, let me show how that works in this image. So in this case, um, we have here the, the, the top level group, the subgroup, the sub subgroup. Uh, and this is another top level group with a subgroup and another top level group with a subgroup. You see here that this subgroup shares with subgroup two and then with subgroup three. So this user here is a direct member of subgroup and therefore an inherited member of sub subgroup it's an indirect member of subgroup two and three because it's shared 
and uh, here the membership is shared. So this is a direct shared membership, and this here is sub subgroup two. It is an indirect inherited or so a uh, indirect shared membership. This is important to understand uh, because sharing and and um, making group memberships correct is, is sometimes difficult and. Um, in large systems, you want to make sure that you understand when users have access to what projects and groups. So to recap, direct member, uh, inherited membership, shared, directly shared, and indirectly shared. Okay, let's have a look at uh, GitLab. Now we come here at the uh, GitLab start page. Um, with a forward slash, I can access the admin area. And in the admin area, I have the users page here where I can see all users. As I mentioned, you'll, you have on the top here all kinds of different uh, roles the user can have or, or states more, statuses. Um, here you can create a new user. And if you create a new user, you can fill in uh, account details, a password will be generated and uh, a reset link will be generated and sent to the user so they can set their own password uh, and you can set some uh, limits here but also you can make a user external uh, an external user has different permissions than an internal user uh, they cannot for example automatically see internal projects uh, and here you can aut automatically validate the account so that it is trusted And go back to the users uh, here. Yeah, you can click on uh, different tabs to see which user are admins, uh, if they have two-factor authentication enabled or disabled. So in this case, you might want to send an email to these uh, users uh, to say, okay, let's enable two-factor authentication. Here you see the external users, blocked users, etc. And then, um, for example, if you have blocked users here. You could say edit and then uh, you can unblock them from this page. Um, important as well is that um, you can uh, set some restrictions here. So for example, you can say that uh, users can not or can or cannot create top level groups and you can make, make profiles private. Um, also, you can say, okay, this is a regular user, an admin user, but also an auditor user. An auditor user is also the special user that has read on only access to everything. Now, if you go into the user, then you can here unblock it. Um, if you go to an inactive user, for example, Deactivate it, and then you can here say activate or block or ban. We don't have any banned users, we have some blocked users. Again, uh, unblock, you can do that here. So that is on, on admin level. If you're an administrator, this is how you work with groups. As a group owner, uh, you have this memberships, um, and uh, you want to do that on a group level or on a project level. Them. I had this project in my mind that I wanted to use, but I forgot the name of it. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Now let's have a look here. <coughs> Uh, let's see. We, let's say we have this uh, this subgroup with some uh, projects in it and with a parent group. And here on in, on the manage, you can uh, manage the membership of that group. Um, here you see that this group has uh, two members, uh, both of which are from Dream Corp, so inherited from the parent. Uh, if I go to the parent, then you also see that they have. 
two members and you see that they are both direct members. Now, if I go down into this uh, project, I could go to, for example, this project and then on membership, let's see. Okay, I see again here two members, of both from DreamCorp. Uh, in this case, I could um, add members to this group. I could invite an entire group, for example, and then uh, select a group from here. Let's say this one, and I can set the role that they have. So this is sort of sharing that group info. Now you see that at group level, these, this is now added as a direct member. And um, this one has a membership of one user, which is also a direct member. So in this case, you can add this person from the organization, uh, from this organization into um, this simple Maven app project. This is a way to see, okay, um, I also explained in the structuring GitLab, you can have a structure with role-based access control where you have uh, groups that reflect your elder active directory. And in this way, you can add these groups to your projects to give access to these projects. Cool. Um, let's go back here. So if uh, as, a, as an admin, um, you might sometimes want to prevent users from being added at higher levels. Uh, so you have um, you have a, 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 a user member of a project or a group, and you you don't want to uh, have them being added to higher levels. Um, there's there's some restrictions in who can do what. So owners on a group can only uh, create owners on groups or subgroups, not on higher groups. And only owners can manage memberships at group level. So uh, as a maintainer or a reporter, you cannot change membership. Uh, on project level, also maintainers can uh, set memberships on, on project level, but not on group level. So if a user is a member of a group or project, they can have the permission level modified on the same or higher level. Um, so they can uh, get the same or more permissions. Um, and you, but, uh, you can also give a user minimum access to a top level group. So minimal access only works for top level groups. These users have no access to any of your subgroups or projects, and then you have to specifically add them to any of these uh, these subgroups or subprojects. That that makes sure that that users are not automatically added to other projects or have visibility to other projects. So if you accidentally made someone owner in a group, um, if you make someone owner then they will also become owner of the uh, subgroups and, and projects underneath. Uh, but if you remove that permission, then all the original permissions are being restored. Um, so then they'll have their, their old permissions back. But if you make yourself owner, then uh, you have to ask someone else to, to, to reset that you cannot, because you cannot take your own ownership away. Now, owners can only be added at the, the group level and um, an owner can either leave a group or decrease the membership to of a different owner. So he, he cannot decrease the membership of, his, of himself. And permissions will, will trickle down to subgroups and projects. As I say, a project can leave a, a, a user can leave a project, and that will also re, uh, take away his ownership there. Now, with that, um, thanks for listening again, and um, I hope you enjoyed it.